Hey folks, I haven't forgotten you, I promise. I'm still making the videos, I'm still working on the plane. And still super excited to bring you guys videos of me doing this stuff. Got lots more to come and updates galore. I just haven't had time to put them all together yet. So for this installment, uh, I'm working on the trim system. Wow, what a bizarre system it is, but it's an interesting build nonetheless. So what you see me working on is parts for the trim mount bracket assembly, which I show in the upper left hand corner. And specifically, I'm working on a couple of bell crank uh, brackets and the cable anchor bracket. Uh, these are pieces that you have to fabricate from just angle aluminum that you have sitting around the shop. Thankfully, they sent it to us. Uh, and it's not difficult. It's just a matter of drilling all the holes and make sure you have, you know, everything correct. Thankfully, those drawings are actually to scale, so you can hold the piece up against the drawing and make sure that it's correct. And I, I find myself doing that a lot. But mostly here, you're just going back and forth between the uh, saw and the bench grinder, uh, you know, trying to make the best possible piece. And so that's a lot of what you're seeing me do here. Um, really boring. Sorry, not, not a super exciting video, I realize. Uh, we'll get to more of that here in a bit. This is going to be a long video. All, all in told, I would say the most important part of this, though, are the two uh, bell crank brackets that you build. They're actually the very first step that you have to build. And the reason I think they're really important is because you have to line them up perfectly uh, inside of the trim mount bracket, which is the big piece. It's the one in the center of the screen, or well was. I actually ended up making a third one just because I felt one of the ones I had made uh, just wasn't quite up to snuff. My, uh, I had a, my, my drill press was slightly uh, misaligned. I didn't notice it. I have lasers on it and it was slightly off. And so I had to adjust to that. And then I went back and everything was good. The trim cable anchor brackets, which are those two rounded ones on the table end there, they're not nearly as important. They don't have to be exact. Uh, interestingly, mine are for whatever reason, whereas the other two should be nearly exact and that then mine weren't, of course, because they need to be. To be clear, all of these pieces are very important. Uh, it's just that the trim cable anchor brackets don't have to match up back to back perfectly. Like I said, though, I ended up making a third bell crank bracket before I was completely happy with it and, you know, got it in position where it needed to be and uh, clecoed in and everything was happy. Uh, I used uh, several washers and a bolt on the inside to actually uh, put them together as if the bell crank was actually in there. Uh, and keep them tight while I drilled the rest of the holes. If you look at the plans, you're actually only drilling uh, one hole in it before you mount it. Then when you mount it, you'll then match drill through to get the other uh, four holes. Uh, it makes sense once you start putting it together, but initially you're gonna be like, why am I doing it this way? So the next thing I started doing once I got those all built is I started working on the uh, trim servo spacer, which is just a, a thicker piece of aluminum that mounts up underneath. Uh, and you do actually have to round it. it. It tells you that, hey, you might have to round this particular piece. And yep, you sure do. Uh, it doesn't quite sit flush to the bottom underneath when they folded that aluminum up. Uh, you know, it's ever so slightly bigger. And so that's what you see me doing right there is I'm, I'm getting it so it'll fit. Uh, there's also a lot of countersinking. So you're going to have to countersink various pieces and parts. Uh, again, it's pretty well documented as to what you're countersinking. So no big deal there. And you'll note through this entire process, I spent a lot of time staring at the instructions. This whole thing was a little weird. It's, it's a bizarre setup how it works. Uh, here you see I've already primed everything. So this is a couple days later, might even been a week later. Uh, so I've got it all primed up now and I'll begin the process of actually riveting things home. Which is always a good time. I love working with the squeezer. It's one of those easy tools, fun to, fun to use, fun to work with, and you know when you get good results because, well, if you got it set right, you get good results every single time. I also don't think any of the pieces were particularly difficult to rivet uh, on this one. Everything just kind of came together nicely, uh, unlike so many other of the pieces where just something always goes wrong. <laughs> uh, gotta love it. 
Anyways, I was talking about it before. Uh, Lynn, who's a fellow right down a ha couple hangers down from me, he's built RV10, he, and he was telling me that this trim assembly is bizarre. And sure enough, uh, here's Lynn now in the video, and we come back talking more about it. And he goes over and goes, yeah, this is a really bizarre system. It's weird how it operates. Because it does operate on a bell crank, which is kind of a cam, the trims, left and right trim, move at different speeds. Uh, which is really strange if you think about it and I'll go more into that when I'm actually doing the installation but long story short is you'll have the both trims fully down uh, at 35 degrees which is what the instructions recommend and by doing that uh, that by the way having the trim fully down that's nose up right uh, because it's trim having the it down fully 35 degrees as you move them up the left one will actually move up at a different rate than the right one. Then, and then the left one will slow down and then the right one will speed up. And then right about when they're both even, the right one slows way down and the left one speeds way up. And the left one will be pointing way high up into the sky. And the right one will be just slightly above where you'd think it would be. And here's my other hangar mates, next, next door neighbors, coming over and, you know, having some fun, talking and hanging out. Those kids are pretty cute they want to help I can't blame them I mean it's pretty neat watching somebody make a plane I think I've talked about this before I've lived in an apartment a couple times in my life and like the whole time I lived in an apartment I never knew any of my neighbors uh, I've been at this hangar for I don't know a couple of weeks now and I've met everybody dozens of times over I mean people just come to you know love to hang out and and are super friendly it's 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 a cool community that's pretty neat Anyway, so at this point, I think I've got the servo on, I've got the linkage hooked up to the bell crank, and I begin the installation of the trim cables themselves. Uh, long black cables, uh, which are cables within cables within cables kind of thing. Uh, and pretty cool. I mean, they're, they're interesting how they work, and I'll have to discuss how to install those later on in this video. They're a pain in the ass between you and me. I was hoping I'd be able to be sneaky and not take the vertical stabilizer and rudder off. Yeah, no way. Yeah, they, you got to take those off. There's just no way to do this work uh, with those still on. And honestly, it needed to come off anyways. I was just putting it off. So at this point, I was like, well, that's not going to happen. So I might as well take off the rudder and take off the vertical stabilizer. Need to do it anyways because... Um, what I'm working on presently, which is not going to be featured in this video, are the fairings, which are on the tops of those pieces, and, well, they can't really be assembled if you're working on those. The reason I was delaying is it's just a pain in the butt to get my arm back down in that tight little hole to get some of those screws out. You know, I, you got to reach down in there with a, uh, a wrench or a socket wrench or something to put over the, the nut that's down there. And then, you know, use a screwdriver or uh, a wrench or something to get the outside one off. It's just a pain. Um, I wish it had some other solution than what it has, but it is what it is. And so, meh, that's what you got to work with. <laughs> right there, you notice I dropped, uh, I dropped a bolt down there. So, I used a piece of tape on a, on a pole or on a dowel. And, or that's what I'm doing. I'm using a piece of tape on a dowel to get those out of there. I have since bought one of those little uh, uh, grabby things. Here we are looking down the gullet of uh, the empennage, and you can see now that trim subassembly just kind of dangling there. And here I am trying to figure out how I'm going to route this cable through there, and it's a pain in the butt. I, I had to create a little tool out of a piece of scrap aluminum that would allow me to reach in there, grab that subassembly, and pull it towards the holes that are in there so that I could get that through and then just slowly feed it. Um, this was, this sucked. Also in the foreground, you see there's a big spool of wire. Uh, something I did not show because uh, I forgot to record it is the wiring up of the of the uh, trim servo to that longer wire that I have there. Um, you know, something you're going to need. I got to run that all the way to the front of the plane. So nice long piece of wires. Uh, I think it's a six strand or six uh, stranded shielded wire uh, suggested by Lynn, the fellow that was a couple hangers down. And uh, yeah, it's good stuff. I can get the number for you if you need it. Lots of just feeding that uh, wire in, that trim cable rather in. And then once you get it, you know, all of them in there correctly, you can mount or screw down 
the the mounts so it's it's in there permanently now it ain't coming out next i went to figure out how to put the elevator trim cable anchor sub assembly it's that little door that with the bolt welded on in there and i realized there's no way to screw it on and where you put it is extremely important so you can see here i took those rivets out this allowed me to screw that bolt that piece on with the the, the one that's mounted on uh soldered on uh, welded on rather and uh, you know position it very carefully and i clicked it back up which you can kind of see up there this is not a real kid camera view sorry uh clicked it up in there and then i'm going to use pop rivets uh later on in the show to put those back on it's exactly what lynn did he told me after the fact and i didn't even realize it here you can see that i'm testing my fit got it all screwed in the you know the cable is now officially attached to the trim tab or well it was and i do some testing you do have to drill it out it's a number 12 drill figured for the second i'd actually show you guys that i'm drilling it out and i drilled into my desk there whoops but yeah here's me drilling the piece off and uh just getting those out of there and doing the same thing on the other side interestingly the most important aspect of putting that cable in there is how far you screw those screws in so right here, this is what the subassembly looks like in the plans. And now I've highlighted the two screws that are bolts rather that I'm talking about. This nut on either side is extremely important and you'll need to adjust where it sits on those threads up or down based on how you want it to trim. And by the way, you want it to trim correctly, obviously. Uh, it took me a long time to figure out how important that one that one nut was and I kept going back and forth trying to figure out why will this not sit correctly why doesn't this work uh, so much so I had to go back over to Lynn's hanger and try to figure out here you can see I'm I'm using a 9 volt battery uh, and just running them up and down and so you'll you'll see them move up and down as I test I had to make some adjustments to where it was on the other end and by then i didn't want to pull the whole thing out because what a pain in the ass so i i started working uh you know from the back of the of the plane like this and it's tough to get your hand in there it's just difficult to work there it's it's tight and it's awkward uh, if the skin wasn't on the top there it'd be real easy eventually i got it to where i needed it to be and uh, screwed everything back in and still wasn't quite sure. So here's me describing the problem while I was out there before I fully understand what the problem was. All right, to give you guys some idea of what I'm trying to do, I'm adjusting my flaps. This one is actually installed correctly, minus the washer and the uh, cotter pin here. But you can see it's at a 35 degree down angle, which is what it should be. This one, on the other hand, you can see... <laughs> is not here's 35 degrees so I gotta get this guy down to here problem is this one is maxed I can't make that go any tighter so I gotta get up in there and work in there and that sucks no you're wrong me from the past that's actually wasn't the problem first of all it's trim tabs not flaps um, and it goes back to what I was talking about a few minutes ago I actually do spend a lot of time fiddling with this moving it up and down trying to figure out how i get more cable and the simple fact of the matter is is the cable is a it's a fixed length you know you're, you're actually i wanted less cable by the way uh once you have everything a certain you know a certain place there's there there is no more cable that's it uh, and you you know it is where it's going to be and what i eventually learned through several hours of fiddling with it was it comes back to that nut that I showed you in the previous images. I'm gonna to try to explain this, but it, it, it took me forever to figure out. So if you remember this drawing, so this is an overhead view of what everything looks like. This particular cable is the problem. And if you look at this cable, uh, it is the same length as the, as the other one, however, right here you'll notice there's an inch and a half or two inch difference and so of course the cable was too long down at the other end because well right here is the problem so the way you solve that is by adjusting that bolt on the far right of this image on the bottom far right the one that i had highlighted previously 
so such that it pulls the whole assembly slightly and causes a little bit of slack to happen within the cable inside the horizontal stabilizer. Uh, basically, you don't want it to be taut. You want there to be a little bit of slop, for the lack of a better term, and that causes, or allows rather, your uh, trim tabs to line up correctly. That's several hours of my life. You're welcome. Uh, here is the final example of it working correctly. I'm making some minor adjustments uh, at this point. I've run it multiple times now since, and I've checked it against my uh, Hangermates RV10. It works exactly the same, and it is correct. Uh, you'll see as I run them back down, they run down identically. They're, they're uh, on par with one another, exactly where they should be, all the way down to the 35 degree angle at the very bottom. Uh, and when you run them all the way up, the right one sticks way up and the left one is only up by an inch or so, which I thought was wrong. It is not wrong. That's absolutely correct. <sighs> that took a long time to figure out, guys. Anyways, so that's it. Uh, I'm super happy that I got this done. Uh, I'm going to start working on the fairings and hopefully I'll have something for you there soon. Thanks, guys.